Winter can be just as productive as any other time of year. Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. This is Kevin and Sarah with Living Traditions Homestead. And we're super excited to be doing a uh, collaboration with three other uh, great YouTube channels, uh, Life in Farmland, uh, Cog Hill Farm, and White House on the Hill. Uh, if you haven't checked out their channels, uh, make sure that you go ahead and do that. We'll leave links down below. Uh, they're doing uh, videos today on the same subject as we are. Uh, this is going to be a four, four channel collaboration and we're all doing videos to help you guys realize that, you know, winter time doesn't have to be a time to just sit around and wait for the next growing season. Winter time can really be a time of year where you can get a lot accomplished and in fact, there's quite a few things that are even easier to do in the winter than they are in the summer. Last year, our big winter project was to put in all of our gardens. Uh, we have now been on our homestead a year and a half, and so last growing season was the first time we had gardens here in our Missouri homestead. Um, and that was because of our hard work during the winter. Uh, we put in uh, back to Eden slash lasagna garden. So in the winter, we cleared that area, put down the cardboard, manure, um, and straw. And then we actually went into the woods and found giant logs that were already down in the woods, hauled them all out, and we used them to build nine raised bed gardens. Now going forward, uh, every winter, we're gonna plan another big project. This year, our big project for the winter is getting ready uh, for pigs this spring. Uh, we've got an area uh, behind us uh, that you can see is pretty uh, overgrown in our woods and we're going to clear that area uh, in order to make room for the pigs that we're going to put in this year. Um, I actually had a friend uh, come over with a drone uh, so we could get some aerial views of our of our property and this is where we're going to be putting uh, the pig area. Uh, so this area here is where we're going to be uh, raising our pigs. And that area is about 125 feet by about 75 feet. Uh, it's not perfectly square, but it's pretty close. So um, that's the area that we're gonna clear out. Um, we're gonna do it by hand. Um, I would love to just be able to come back here with my brush hog, but Unfortunately, here in Missouri, we have so many rocks, and especially in this area, it is so rocky with big rocks uh, that there's just no way for me to really get in here with a bush hog. So we're gonna have to do most of this by hand. We're not clearing it like into pasture. Right. Uh, we're just clearing it to be uh, movable uh, for us and for the pigs, um, and just to, you know, give them a good place to start. Missouri has a ton of ticks and chiggers and copperhead snakes. Right. So this is a much actually safer time of year for us to be doing work back in the woods. Let's go back into the woods and I'll show you uh, some of the things that we have planned for deeper back into the woods. Okay, so we're a little bit deeper into the area now where we're planning on raising the pigs. Um, I'll show you a few of the things that we kind of have planned. Uh, so for example, right here next to me is a fairly big um, cedar tree. Uh, this size tree we're going to plan on leaving, uh, but again, I will trim these branches to at least head level. Uh, that way when we are looking back here to check on the pigs, we'll have a good uh, clear uh, field of vision so we can, you know, make sure that things are safe. Um, if you look around down on the ground, there's a lot of just old dead branches. I don't really care about these. The pigs will root these up, they'll break them up. Uh, they're gonna take care of all of this uh, smaller stuff that's on the ground. I don't really care about this at all. They will just take care of it. Um, that's kind of the plan for all over. You know, little trees this size um, are just gonna come out. Uh, we're just gonna cut them down. Um, you know, medium sized trees like this. Uh, we're gonna have to make some decisions about thinning some of those out. You know, we have our work cut out for us. It's going to be a big project, uh, but when it's done, it's gonna give us a lot of extra usable room. By the time we get done, um, I'm hoping that this will be a good usable area so that we can uh, get better on our planning uh, for the pigs that we're gonna get this spring. All right, so this tree is our first one. Let's get to work.
we're at just about the end of our first day and I think we've made really good progress. We got about a 20 or 25 foot wide strip the entire length of this area done. Uh, we're now working on the next 20 or 25 feet and we're going to just keep going back and forth like that till we get it cleared. We're going to get back to work. We'll give you an update tomorrow. So by the time we finished up day two, uh, it was dark. So we didn't get to do a follow up that night, uh, but we thought we'd come back out today and show you guys uh, what we got accomplished. It ended up taking us two and a half days uh, to get that entire area cleared. Uh, we still have just a little bit of uh, cleanup work to do and some brush piles to burn uh, that we'll show you in a little bit. But thank God uh, that we were able to get, uh, get it all done when we did. Uh, we thought it would take us four or five days, but luckily we got it done in two and a half. And here's why we're so glad that we got it done when we did. When we woke up this morning, the ground and everything was just covered in a blanket of snow. Uh, it's beautiful, but we wouldn't have been able to see anything that was on the ground for us to pick up. So it was a good thing that we really hustled and uh, got this project done in a short amount of time. But you can see behind me, uh, this is an area that we did not clear. You can see that it's just completely overgrown. Uh, lots of uh, trees that are, need to be thinned. Um, but just over this way is where we have cleared and is all completed. We're just really excited and proud of how much work we got done in a small amount of time. As you can see, we left uh, all of the uh, medium and bigger sized trees. Uh, most of them are either uh, cedars or pines, uh, but we do uh, the big trees that we left, the real big trees, are all oak, which will be great for raising the pigs under. So I was super excited that we were able to get this done. I'm going to walk down to the other end so that you guys can get some idea of how big this area is. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a couple last things uh, before we uh, end this video today. We were able to clear all the way to back here. We were able to save a lot of the cedar trees that we cut down to uh, use as poles for future projects. So we'll be able to use these. Uh, possibly even when we build the pig pen, uh, but for sure for other projects around the homestead. So we try uh, to use as many of our natural resources as we can. Uh, this saves me a lot of money that I don't have to go out now to the hardware store and buy lumber for posts. So you can see behind me, we ended up with, well, really four big piles of brush that we pulled out of the woods. Uh, we're going to have some great bonfires this spring, uh, but we need to wait for things to dry out just a little bit. Uh, not so dry that we set the woods on fire, but dry enough that we can burn this stuff up. Well, you guys, we've had such a great time being a part of this four channel collaboration about taking advantage of winter and getting projects done regardless of the weather. We got a lot more work to do on this project, so make sure you guys uh, keep coming back. Uh, we're going to still have to build our pig pens, uh, build the shelters, uh, figure out a watering system, and then actually get the pigs which we'll be raising uh, this summer. Don't forget from here to uh, head on over to White House on the Hill. Uh, we'll be leaving a, a link below uh, so you can go check out what Jake is up to in northern Missouri and see how he's taking full advantage of the winter as well. If you guys have not yet joined our community of traditionalists, go ahead and press the subscribe button below to just see what we've got going on. You know, it's our goal to live a more traditional life in this crazy modern world, and we hope you guys will come along and join us. So until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead, and God bless. God bless.